all-in-one arcade sticks. As soon as you search for the word arcade, they pop up everywhere from Amazon to eBay. And it's no surprise because arcades are such an integral part of gaming history, at least for those of us of a certain vintage. Are you calling me old? <laughs> yes. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Fair dues, I'll cop to that. Yeah, um, whether it be your arcades on you know, the seaside in Britain or your bigger arcades in the USA, um, we all have some relationship with the with the arcade machine. And I know it's something that you've perhaps not covered as much so far on the channel. No, we cover a lot of micros, a lot of consoles, um, not so much the arcades. I'm hoping to get some arcades here in the cave, as, you, as some of you know, as soon as I can. But until we have space for the arcade, and I know many of you at home, you just don't have space for a full size or even a bar top arcade, there are alternatives. And this promises to be such a thing, doesn't it? It definitely promises <laughs> to be things. Um, <laughs> Tell us about some of those promises because they're on the box there, Mark, aren't they? Well, this is the Iriluru, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, the Iriluru 3399 All-in-One Arcade. Um, I've got absolutely no idea what's inside the box or inside whatever is in the box, but it does tell us it's a high-definition home game machine. Um, and there's some really good stuff on the back. So, for example, it's global recognised. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, super high video resolution. It is. Uh, it's got green low power design and hundreds of classic games. Absolutely, hundreds of hundreds of them, hundreds. all in the Moonlight Treasure Box. It's got hundreds. <laughs> So I think what we need to do is open this up, see if it tickles our nostalgia buttons and um, see where we go from there. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing it from an aesthetic point of view. Is it well built? And then does it run the games well? Are we going to encounter slowdown? What games does it have? Are we going to have that problem that seems to happen on a lot of these cheap sticks of um, duplicate games under different names? Oh, yeah. You know, I've seen that <laughs> before. Not. So we'll see if it delivers on its promises and what we can do with it. Let's, uh, let's unbox it, first of all, and see what's in the Moonlight Treasure Box. Let's do it. So we've got, I can see a couple of knobs. I can see a knob poking through there. Bag off the knob. Um, so. HDMI cable. USB A to A cable. Old school VGA cable. Oh wow, that's pretty good that that's included. Um, and a power supply that is absolutely 100% definitely CE rated. <laughs> and we've got a manual here for, it's got another name. This is now a multi-game family box. Oh. Uh, and it seems to think it's a couple of joy pads in here. In fact, when I was looking for listings for this thing on Amazon, I came across this listing in which one of the pictures is not quite right. They seem to think that this giant two-player arcade control panel is a couple of handheld joypads. A couple of handheld joypads. <laughs> and we've got that image right here on the screen right now. And also on the back of this manual, uh, this may look familiar to some people. This is a, an alternative stick that's available. They must all have the same innards and come with the same manual. Yeah. But this stick will look incredibly familiar to those who followed the Capcom arcade stick a year or two back it came out. You can see this is the exact Such same mold. <laughs> it must have come out of the exact factory and all they've done is remove the word Capcom. Well, that might bode well for this unit because it might actually be the same internals as a Capcom stick. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know, we'll find out. But mm. that stick was about 200 pounds. 200 pounds? Yeah, how much did you pay for this one, Mark? Well, they range on eBay and Amazon from around £140 to £200, but that's kind of like, you know, the price you never pay because they're always on sale. Yeah. Um, this one cost me the princely sum of £40 plus £1.99 delivery. That's not bad. I mean, yeah. even if you strip it for parts, that might still be quids in for you, but it depends what's in there. Let's carry on unboxing it. We've got um, Kettle Lead, European. Um, an English yep. unladen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. We've got a button. We've got two buttons. Well, okay. I hope they've not fallen off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're spares. Okay. Spare buttons. Can we see what kind they are? There's no markings on these. They're, um, yeah. Well, they're definitely Samoa clones. Put it that way. Samoa clones. They're exactly like Samoa clones. Are you ready for the big reveal? Reveal those knobs. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Well, yeah, we've got some artwork on there. We've got uh, Ryu. Is that Ryu? 
My knob's been bagged. Yeah, my knob was bagged. <laughs> okay, okay, you pulled it off. I removed, <laughs> removed mine. I pulled it right off. Okay, um, first impressions then. I, I guess let's lift it out so we can get proper first yeah, impressions. Okay. It's certainly a colourful You lift, I'll hold the box. Shall I move the settle? Yeah. 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 Right. There it is then. Uh, the face of Ryu on the, on the front there, Pandora 11. Mm. Um, let's be honest, copyright is of no concern to the people who create these things. Obviously, it's something that doesn't come with any consequence. Um, no. Might be one of the reasons why different sellers pop up and disappear. Yeah. Of these and also units. the name Pandora. I mean, it seems that a lot of companies have just started using the name Pandora because it's associated with these multi-car arcades. It feels like there's um, a protective layer on there. Can you get a pick on that? Can we, can yep. we do a satisfying peel back of the cover? Well, we can from there. You've got it, Mark. Peel away. Peel away. See if it goes around those buttons. Oh, it's oh going to, it's no. Going to leave little bits, isn't it? <laughs> it's not going to be the satisfying peel I hoped it well, would be. Well, we might, we might get into the run, the clear run now. Hang on. Right there. All right, there's a nice peely bit there. Look at that. Oh, that felt good. That's ah, really shiny now, actually. So <laughs> first impressions, buttons are a bit spongy. You've got these little ones for pause and play. Obviously, there's a pause feature wired into whatever emulator it's using. Yeah. Player two um, player. Any buttons on the front? No, I'm guessing we have to hold a couple of buttons to put your credits in or something like that. I've got a feeling that the pause might be coins or okay. something from just from what I read on the, the listing, but that might be manual, completely really. wrong. Yeah, we should read the menu because <laughs> that's bound to be really helpful. But around the back, there's some useful things. Um, we've yeah. actually got an opening for all of the ports. Uh, so we've got the VGA output. We've got power switch over here. Uh, 12 volt DC in, HDMI, audio jack, three and a half mil volume, nice and handy. And then, oh, and the setting button. So that obviously mm. gets you into the menu. Okay. And a couple of USB ports. So I'm guessing you can plug in additional controllers. But what I'm interested about is that there's these hinges here. Okay. So does it just flip open? Is there a button or a catch or there's some screws? Oh, there's a couple of screws. So it should be as easy as undoing those. Um, there's no access to a memory card or anything like that from the outside, is there? No. So, on the underside, just a bunch of feet. But you know, I'm Mark Fix's stuff, so I'm going to have to take it apart. We're going to have to take it yeah. apart. Okay, let's grab I'm the screwdriver. Go and get a screwdriver. <laughs> and before Mark and I get this set up, I must say a big thank you to our sponsor today, Surfshark. Their VPN services are available for 83% off when you use the promo code RMC. Just for you, the RMC viewers, head over to surfshark.deals forward slash RMC enter that RMC promo code, and as well as 83% off, you'll also get three months free. There's plenty of things to love about Surfshark's VPN service. One subscription allows you to install and run Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices at the same time. And there's apps for all platforms. PC, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, Smart TVs, Amazon Fire TV Stick, Apple TV, Chrome, Firefox, Xbox, and PlayStation. Go and give it a try, protect your identity online, stay safe. And now let's crack on with the show. Thank you, Surfshark. And let's open it up and invalidate the warranty before we've even tested it. Rock and roll. Do you need the manual? Are you gonna be okay? I, I don't need the manual, <laughs> no. It looks like it's made of a very thin pressed steel on the back there, actually. I'd guess steel, yeah. Bad. I would guess steel. It's metal. It's quite robust, I think, actually, considering. These must be made so cheaply. All right, well, that's the two screws out, and all things being equal, it should just lever up on these hinges that you pointed out earlier. Oh, the, the smooth action on that, Mark. Wow, <laughs> there's an LED strip in there. <laughs> there's a wiring loom, which goes onto GPIO on whatever this board is. That looks pretty good, and look, it's quite tidy in here, and there's a cable snake, and look at that. Speaker, just the one. There is there is a grill, perhaps, for a there's stereo a, sound, but we've just got the one speaker. There's on. an aperture for one speaker. I wonder if you could actually hook two speakers up to this for stereo. So no surprise with the joystick and the buttons. They're pretty standard affair. I'm really interested to know what's powering this thing. There's a single board computer there with all the ports coming out the back. No idea what that is at first glance. I can see an SD card in there, though. Oh, yeah. Should we pull that out, see if we can figure out what it is? Yeah, because I haven't got a clue just okay. looking at it. We might need to remove that heat sink as well. Do you want me to recap that for you there, Mark? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's your turn to recap the whole unit. <laughs> I, um, I can manage this one. Oh, that was easy. And absolutely no clue whatsoever on the underside of the board as to what this is. It's surprisingly easy to get into because I remember some of these older sticks would mm. come with just um, boards hot snotted in, uh, you know, big black globs of, um, yeah, you know, stuff on top of Epo chips. So epoxy you can't, resin. So you can't yeah. even identify what the chips are. But you can actually buy these things now in kits. So you can buy this board on its own and you can buy the case on its own. So Oh, I didn't know you could yeah, buy the board you on its own. Yeah, buy them um, in kits. So they're designed to be um, easily maintained. I mean, looking in here, we've got a bunch of logic over here. So interestingly here, you see the TSC 9669 and that would be quite familiar to a lot of people who set up home systems because that's present in quite a lot of um, HDMI to VGA converters. Right. Can't see any RAM at all. And I'm assuming that the process is under there. So the RAM is probably under there as well. On a lot of these system on a chips, the RAM's built into the- Into the processor. Yeah, the yeah. processor itself. So might not actually be anything in there at all. The, the, Do you think we uh, should have tested this thing before we took it apart, Mark? No. <laughs> this is the kind of rock and roll frontier lifestyle we lead. So while you're taking that off, Mark, I'm going to take out the micro SD card and pop it in my laptop and to see what's in there. I'm just interested to see what files are on there, if it's even readable. Um, that's locked into place. There we go. That's a 16 gig micro SD. There's no name brand on there. I'm sure it's a, a pretty cheap affair. So you've got the fan off there. Mark, what have you found? Well, we've found an all winner H2 plus uh, processor. And um, I think there's a quad core running about 1.3 gigahertz. We've got a little RAM chip there. I think that's two gigabytes. Two gig of RAM. You know, I'm pretty sure when we read the specs on the website that this promised an H3 CPU. Yeah, I thought it said something about an H3 CPU. And um, so when that's... do you got it for 40 quid? I think that's video <laughs> RAM as well. I can't be sure, but I think that's video RAM. Right, I'm just going to plug this micro SD card into the laptop. Let's see if we've got anything at all. I'm running Windows. It may not be able to read the partition. Yeah, I'm seeing a 16 gig drive with a 14 gig partition and then a 16 meg partition. So that must be some kind of boot sector. Right. Um, that's fat formatted, the, the 16 meg partition with just three files on called boot one, boot two, boot three. And then the other partition is not of a file system that Windows recognizes. So I could load up like a, a Linux live CD or something like that to see if we can browse it. But it's fair to say it's Linux based um, and I can't just plug into Windows and browse this. So bearing that in mind, should we just put it back together and see how it performs stock? I think so, yeah. Let's just, before we ruin it, <laughs> we before Windows tries to fix the partition and makes it unbootable. <laughs> we may have already ruined happens. it. <laughs> The first thing we see from the 340 page menu is fighting games. Lots of them as you'd probably expect from the fighting artwork on the stick. Nothing wrong with that at all. If King of Fighters is your thing, then you've pretty much got every version going, as well as all your Street Fighters, Last Blades, Tekkens. There's more fighting than a schoolyard full of Amstrad and Spectrum owners in here. We started off with one of those King of Fighters games and it licks along at a nice playable pace. No problems handling Neo Geo emulation at all. And that carries through to all the Neo Geo games. I think any slowdown we really experienced was true to the original hardware, so we can't really hold that against it. Likewise, with one of the Street Fighter Alpha games here, no problems with the number of frames per second that we were getting. But the keen-eyed will already be furiously typing out a comment shouting, what about the screen tearing? And yes, screen tearing really is a problem. 
Our type Leo is a great demonstration of it here. Watch the scenery at the top of the screen and how it's tearing as it scrolls. I'm having a huge amount of fun playing this game, but that's really distracting and it's not pretty at all. Ordinarily, you'd have options in your emulators to resolve this, so of course we made a beeline for the settings menu. The only option related to it that we could find in the menu is quality optimization, which can be on or off. There don't seem to be any other graphics related options. So all we could do was turn it on and see if it made a difference. And it did, just not with screen tearing that remained on the screen. No, what this did was it enabled upscaling effects to try and interpolate the pixels and present them in a more pleasing way for modern displays. To show you how this looks on the left, scaling is enabled. Notice the clearer background and the clarity around the leg of the bad dude. And this will be familiar to seasoned emulator users, of course. You'll be familiar with all these settings and all of these scaling options. It all comes down to taste, of course. My personal preference favours keeping these effects turned off. So there's not actually any way that we found to stop screen tearing on this thing. At least no way that we can find so far. And it will bug you, I'm sure. It certainly bugs me. The more I see it, the more it bugs me. We ventured back to the safety of one-on-one -on -one fighters next and fired up Mortal Kombat, which to our surprise played more like a flick book than the gore fest that we love. We know from other games that the hardware is capable of playing this. It had no problems with Street Fighter Alpha. The emulation just mustn't be optimized for this particular arcade board from Midway with the hardware that we've got in the stick. And it's not just arcade games in here. Delving deeper, we found all kinds of Mega Drive and Super Nintendo games, often home ports of arcade games, which I'm really not interested in if the real arcade ROM is there to play. That's why we love emulation, so we can play the real thing, even if we don't have the space for an actual arcade machine. Now, does this thing really have the number of games it promises? Well, we've seen these promises made before, going all the way back to Famiclone consoles with 1,001 game carts that actually contain about 50 games looped over and over with random names. And there is a big selection of games here. But if we delve a little deeper and search for, let's say, Cruise, for example, we find versions of Golden Axe listed under Cruise Axe, Cruise Missile 2, and there's another Cruise Axe that seems to be in there twice. Likewise, if we search for Bean, we've got Super Cute Beans, it's Pac-Man, Stuffed Bean Elf, it's Pac-Man again, and Funny Bean Elf 2, which is Miss Pac-Man. And on and on it goes with the, the various beans all the way down to seasoned beans. Mmm, beans. I'm hungry now, Mark. And I was hungry too, hungry to find out if we could get a better gaming experience from this arcade stick. With that in mind, Neil and I set about configuring it as a controller in MAME. By plugging the supplied A2A USB cable in, we were able to see the unit appear as two sets of joysticks and buttons in Windows. Configuration in MAME was simple, and although the emulation was better and the sprite animation much more fluid, we still had some tearing from our Ryzen 5 mini PC. A trip into the MAME settings to turn on VSync fixed this, and the gaming fun really commenced. Even the clone stick and parts are nice to use, and whilst not Sanwa, are more than acceptable. I took an opportunity to grab myself a quick burger. In burger time. Here we can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the main PC we use here on the left and the arcade stick output on the right. Older arcade games might not have the most fluid animation anyway, but the arcade stick feels laggy and the screen tearing in most games is a definite distraction. The main setup produces the much more faithful colour tones of the arcade, whilst the arcade stick pushes out a much more contrast-laden image, pushing the palette towards some harsher colours. So Mark, we've had a chance to play on it. Yep. First impressions? Ooh. Well, it's not terrible, but it's also not very good at the same time. The thing that I've got in my head is the fact that you only paid 40 pounds for it. Yeah. Now at 40 pounds, I think Ooh. you get some enjoyment out of it. It's yeah. not bad. We, we did encounter some issues. Um, aside from the weird game names all throughout, uh, <laughs> the repetition of games, we don't know. Hilarious. We don't know how many games are in this thing. There's just no. so many that are renamed. There are some big games, you know, you've got yeah. Street Fighters, your King of Fighters, all, all of those games. The thing that I noticed a lot was screen tearing. Now, 
ordinarily, I would go into an emulator and I would enable vSync to solve that if I was sure. having that kind of problem. All we had was that quality on or off setting. We couldn't we couldn't fix that at all. Yeah, and all it did it up, upscaled it to a point of a, almost like an oil painting impressionistic filter in Photoshop, and it, yeah. it really did ruin it actually. So I just keep thinking back to the fact that you only paid forty quid for it. I think at forty pounds, despite all its flaws, value for money. Yes, I'd take that. It'd be a fun. You can buy the stocking parts, filler. Could you? You can buy the parts for forty quid. It'd be a hell of a big stocking to squeeze it in. But um, <laughs> you know, for, stocking filler, fine. Um, anything beyond that, if you're yeah. if you're really into your gaming, you're going to spot those flaws and they are going to bug you. Yeah. So that's not where the journey ends for us because we were talking while we were playing about the possibilities of what you could do with this. What else can we do? How can we get more value for money out of this? And you discovered something interesting with the USB ports. Uh, yeah, if you plug it into the USB port, it becomes um, two controllers in Windows. Uh, we had a little bit of trouble with that. Um, the first time we plugged it in, it comes up with an undefined device or something along those lines. And we so tried... <laughs> my mind immediately went to, oh no, has this thing got malware in it? Is Windows blocking some kind of root kit that's trying to be installed? Some foreign agency <laughs> spying on us. Um, but actually it was power issues, wasn't it? Yeah, underpowered ports from the, uh, the little main PC that we were using. But we got around that by putting some extra power into the circuit. Yeah. So this is now just a dumb joystick. Yeah. We're running MAME and other emulators on the PC. The same PC that you saw on the Sindon Light Gun episode. Pew, pew. And um, the difference in the gaming. I was really, really shocked. Yeah. Despite, you know, aside from the flaws and things that we've spoken about previously, the thing that really shocked me was the color depth. Yeah. It looked more arcadey as well. Mm. Whereas the inbuilt emulator kind of had a... Um, I'm loathe to say Commodore 64 kind of sheen, but oh. it did look a little bit compressed in its hues. And I love the Commodore 64, but it, it gave me that kind of home computer aesthetic. Washed out, I would yeah, say. It was washed, washed out, out compared to uh, going through our PC here. So, um, you know, that the TV, exactly the same TV. So yep. we eliminated that. We enabled V-Sync in main. Bad dudes, it was smooth. The colors were lovely. Yep. It was just upscaled on a one-to-one -one pixel basis. We weren't using any special effects. And it was just so much nicer. Yeah. Again, 40 quid, 350 quid for a PC. So it's, you can't really compare apples to apples. That wouldn't be fair. This is where we want to go with this. Um, but I've got to do something about this art. But it's beautiful. <laughs> I have noticed, actually, if we have a look here, the art, it's not within the acrylic top. It's just a sticker and I can... Go on, peel it off. Yeah. Peel I it off. You can do it. To Heal that as one great big it's sticker. It's actually looking better already. Look at that. I'll stop there, but um, we can we can get this art off. So we, we could replace the artwork, or we could go one step further. And I've got some offcuts from the wood wall here. We could maybe um, create Ooh, a new control panel. I like it. That's maybe good some idea. resin. I don't know. Resin. We, we can come up with something to cave it. Add some extra LED strips inside. LED strips. Um, the buttons were a bit mushy. Yeah. And I've had a box kindly sent to me from Monster Joysticks. Here it is, if we have a look oh. inside. We've got a selection of genuine Sanwar arcade parts. Uh, genuine <laughs> Sanwar arcade parts. A selection of colours that actually mimic the wall over here. So they're sort of cave-themed colours. Nice. Um, and these joysticks with uh, transparent back tops. Just wanted to, to be a bit different, and I quite like these transparent tops. Yeah, they're a really nice shape, aren't they? I like that. Yeah, I thought you'd like the shape of them, Mark. Now, our ideas with this go even further than just a new control panel and new okay. buttons. Um, because you started firing ideas at me while we were playing. It was a real brainstorming session. We've talked about the Sindon light gun in that episode and how I want to create a projector-based arcade where you guys can come and visit and use the light gun. Well, what about if we incorporate this into it? Um, as a controller. As a controller. So you could maybe have the light gun holstered yeah. to one side. Uh, you can have this set up and theme to look like the cave and then integrate a projector. Have you got a Pico projector or something like that? a smaller projector? I've got a smaller LCD projector. Pico, yeah. yeah. I think we're going to follow this up with a bit of a DIY episode, aren't we? I think so. I mean, maybe what we can do is we can take this, we can build it into the top of a, a unit that stands in front of the projector screen. So you have your insert coin, your start buttons, all your buttons for playing all the arcade games in MAME as well as the light gun. So, And for anything else, a wireless keyboard. We can just Which can be up. tucked inside. So it should have everything covered. Uh, what we're going to be left at the end, end of that whole process is going to be nothing like the Pandora. 
No. The Pandora 11. I noticed up here it's, uh, what's this? Um, Merline. No idea why that's written on there. Oh, Merlin. Yeah, but at the end of it, we're just really going to be using the shell. But um, hopefully you'll enjoy that process. And hopefully today's yeah. review gives you an idea as, as to whether you'd want this. 40 quid? Yes. 150 quid? No. No. If you happen to have one gathering dust in a cupboard, you may now like the fact that you can use it as a USB controller. So dig it out and make use of it. Yeah. Looking forward to that episode, Mark. We'll get the tools out. Yep, definitely. Get our hands dirty. Be good. Yeah, good. Well, thank you for joining me as always. It's been interesting. Thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.